Hey family, so I hope y'all are doing amazing and it's staying safe and out the way, okay? So with that being said, y'all just wanted to check up, check up in on y'all to see how have y'all been. This is our palace check-in and y'all, God is doing some amazing things. He's doing some amazing things. And um, one thing that I was saying before um, I got on here was that... Um, what was I saying? It was God. The more let, the more we give God what we cannot control. Because the thing is, what I'm realizing, family, is when we surrender more to God, it does something. It really does something, y'all. Giving God everything that you like. That's everything. Honestly, I say everything because. God, when he, when you allow him to be God in your life, it teaches you how to have faith. It grows you in different ways that you've never been grown before. And also it just, it gives you this peace. It gives you this freedom. It's a freedom, y'all. And for me, it was a freedom that I was looking for. You know, uh, it was a freedom for for me once I, I had it before. And somehow, you know, the weight of the world was just wow. But the more you just continue to spend time with God, y'all, or just allow God's love and his grace to keep you instead of your works, I'm telling y'all, it's less complicated what do I mean? You might be saying, like, Dree, what do you mean by that, right? Well, this is the thing, y'all. A lot of times, with just America in general, if you realize this world, this nation loves control, right? And serving the God that we serve, he wants to give to you freely. He wants to give to us freely. His love is freely given to us. We don't have to work for his love, you know, even with who God has called us to be. We don't have to work for man's approval. And when I say man's men and women, it's not, you know, me saying that you have to work for a man's, no. Man's approval, women and men, you don't have to work for no one's approval because God has already approved you for whatever he's called you to, whatever it is, whether he called you to preach, whether he called you to teach, whether he called you to whatever he has called you, God's approval is it's bigger than anyone's approval. You're approved already because you was born for the mandate that God has given you on your life. When God created you, before he even formed you, and your mother's womb, he knew you. It says in his word, it says in Jeremiah, um, in Jeremiah 1, y'all, and this is um, in Jeremiah, um, yeah, when God was talking to Jeremiah, letting him know that he was a prophet, right? So, it says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 um, through 5, it says, let me read, I'm going to read a little bit more. So it's going to be chap, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 through 10. Y'all, it's really good, so I'm just going to do that, right? So it says, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. And y'all, let me just say this, y'all. I remember when God has spoke this word to me a while back, and um, I remember my thing was always like, Lord, I'm too young. You know, because at that time I was around like, what, 20? I think I was like 20, maybe eight, 19. It was somewhere around there. But I remember that um, I was just kept saying how I was too young to do this, too young to do that. And, you know, the people that I was around and making no better, you know, they didn't encourage me in doing the work, the, doing what God had called me to do. You know? And, you know, as a kid, you would hear from different grown-ups, whether it be people at church or whatever, they'd be like, stay in the kid's place. And they'd be like, you know what, uh, don't think you grown just because maybe you're not following their rules, whatever it could be, right? Um, but the thing was, it was like, Lord, I'm too, I'm too young to do this, you know, cause you heard that all your life. Like you too young to be doing that. Wait, just wait, wait, baby, wait, 
Well, the thing is, if God calls you to do something and he tells you to do it now, you better do it. I don't care who says it. You know, make sure it's Jesus for sure. And once you get that confirmation that it's God that's telling you to do whatever he's calling you to do, you do it. I don't care who it is. I do not care who it is because I'd rather you obey God and disappoint the people that think they're your God, that think they're your God. You rather have, you know, um, what is it? You rather be approved by God than man, because man's approval is temporary. Think about it, y'all. God, what God has for you is eternal. What God has for you is long lasting and is fulfilling. What this world offers us is temporary because we're men. We're women and men, right? At the end of a warm man, man, at the end of man, or just man, man, at the end of the day, that's who we are. We're, we're created by God. And the thing is, since the whole thing with many of y'all is just like now, um, how can I say this? I don't want to go that far into this. I'm just, the thing is, y'all, us doing things in our flesh or just being men in general, we are, the things that we do in our own strength are temporary. God wants to give us something long lasting. That's why sometimes it is important to wait on certain things. In this case, what I'm talking about is whatever God is calling you to, just say God is calling you to. I don't know, maybe start a business, you know, maybe start a ministry that he's been telling you to do, right? If God told you to do it, do it. It may get you uncomfortable. A lot of times what God have you to do is very uncomfortable, but it is pushing you into faith. It's causing you, it's stretching your faith. And keep in mind, y'all, without faith, you cannot please God. And it's in the word, if y'all go look it up, okay? You can't please God without faith. And you have to have faith to believe God right so um with that being said family releasing that control the control y'all i promise you the more you just surrender and let god be god and let him guide you that's where it's at and i'm not telling y'all nothing that i'm not i have not experienced or experiencing y'all when i tell y'all it's so much peace letting god do things that you cannot and uh, one thing that i had said before prior to this was because um what i say um with us being you know human beings a lot of times we want control you know because we can try to figure out how it's gonna you know come out but the thing with jesus you have to trust him you may not always know how it's gonna come out but you do because it says in the word of god that god's plans are to uh, prosper to prosper you and not to harm you but to give you hope in the future that is true so one thing about it is when you can't see you can surely know that God's word does not come back void his plan is to prosper you to give you hope in the future and a lot of times what you know requires you know anything from God for you to receive is just faith it's faith, and I'm not saying just because sometimes it takes you to, you know, press that faith, especially that faith of mustard seed, the mustard seed of the mustard seed size faith, size faith, right? And y'all, you can move mountains with that faith, even if it's this little, just like this little, right? So, with that being said, family, um, it's not going to be just a super long word, right? It's not going to be a super long word, however, um. I just encourage us all to release more control to God. Um, release control to him. Let God guide you in this season, y'all. If you're looking for peace, he will give you peace. And, um, yeah. And, y'all, right now I just woke up. That's why I kind of, my hair is kind of still everywhere. But um, I say, you know what, I'm just going to look a little bit, like, just feed on her, right? But just still make myself look presentable and okay? kind. And then um, my voice is a little, <laughs> a little quiet. Um, anyway, y'all, I was just thinking, like, man, it's so much peace. It's so much peace in God. And um, when you really just rest in him, trust that he know what he's doing, that even when you don't, he do. And it's okay not to know everything. It's okay. Because we serve a God that does. 
And if you just ask him, he'll give it to you if it's according to his will, right? So with that being said, family, being said, family um, I love y'all so much, but God love y'all more. And I will be on here as, as the Lord allow me to. Um, I'm super excited, y'all, because God loves us so much. And he is so good. That's the thing. God is so faithful. He is so faithful. <laughs> God is so faithful, y'all. He's amazing. Um, so, yeah, y'all, just spend time with the Lord. Um, and y'all, again, God is not religious. Jesus, he was not religious. That, oh, y'all, let me just say this. Can I say this? I got to say this, y'all. Um, one thing that I was uh, talking, I was just, I was thinking about this this week. And, um... What I realized is that God, Jesus was not religious. He was not religious. No, Jesus were, was relational. He was very relational. And when I say that, y'all, I think it's in the book of Matthew. When uh, Jesus went to the um, the center, he went to where I think Matthew. So it is actually in the book of Matthew. So it's in the book of Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 9. Um, verse, let's see, um, I'm going to read from verse, so it's chapter 9, verse 10 through, okay, through, so verse 10 through 13, right? So it says, and it came to pass, as Jesus said at me in the house, and this is the King James Version, y'all, y'all can look at it in your own version but i'm going with the king james version so it says and it came to pass as jesus sat at meat in the house <laughs> behold many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples and when the pharisees saw it they said unto his uh, disciples why eateth your master um, with publicans and sinners but when jesus heard that he said unto them they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick, but they that are sick, but go ye and learn what they meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Right? So think about this, y'all. A person that is healed, that there is nothing wrong with them, do they need to be having surgery on? No. God, he comes to that. Just how it says that God will leave the, uh, he will leave the 99 for that one, that one that is lost, that lost sheep. God is doing that. God is doing that, y'all. So, again, y'all, it's not for us to be religious. Y'all, y'all, Jesus did not call us to be religious. He called us to have relation, like relations with our brothers and sisters. Y'all, religion will push people away. It will push people away. Think about this. The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they knew the word of God, but they were trying to just continue to keep the laws. When I think when Jesus had asked them about certain things, they knew the answer, but their hearts was way from it. You know, they were trying to be justified by their works and not by their faith. Right. They felt like they, they had something to boast about, that they could look down on other people because they kept the law. But in their hearts, they were so wicked so wicked they dress this way or that way but in their hearts they were far away from jesus they their religion blind them from the messiah they were talking to jesus talking to jesus not even no they were so blinded with their religion that they couldn't see that the messiah was right in front of them that was going to redeem the world that was going to redeem them their savior was right in front of them but they were so caught up into the religion of it they were caught up into what they wear, what they looked like, you know, just because they kept the laws. The laws were not necessarily in their heart. They just knew it. Right. Y'all, this is good. And then also think about this. That's what pushed the sinners away from them. The sinners didn't want nothing to do with them because they felt like I can't keep that law. I can't do that. They felt beneath them. They felt beneath the Sadducees when really they had more. Oh, it says in the word of God that. Um, they will enter into heaven before they do. And that's why the y'all go look it up. Please go look all this stuff up. And I will start the book of Matthew. It has it all up in there. Okay. So that's the thing. They wanted, they needed help. The sinners knew they needed help. And maybe some didn't know. But the thing is, the way that the religion was pressed down to them or shown to them, they didn't feel like they could even keep it. 
And I don't know if they even wants to be a part of something like that because it felt like they had to do all these things just to work, just to have what was already theirs. And at that time, you know, uh, Jesus hadn't died yet. But the thing was, they would have still had to work for it, right? So with that being said, family, I encourage us all today to check our hearts. I'm going to always ask you to check your heart because that's something that God has me to do a lot. Check my heart, especially when you are ministering to God's people, when you are doing the work of the Lord, whether you, whatever field you're in, whether you are a doctor, whether you're a lawyer, whether you are a pediatrician, whether you are a salesman, whether you're a clerk, whatever you are, right? Whatever you are, you're still talking to God's people, whether they're lost or found. So instead of being so religious about it, be relational. Everybody's not going to look like y'all. Everybody's not going to look like us. Everybody's not going to look like you. Right? But does that mean push them away? So when I say that, you still have to discern spirits. I do believe that. It's still discerning spirit. In addition to that, don't fear. Because perfect love casts out fear. So say, for instance, you know, uh, what I'm thinking about is Daniel. You know, Daniel, there was um, uh, in the book of Daniel, um, how he was in a, a land, you know, a foreign country. Uh, and when I say foreign country, it was a foreign land because the thing was they served another God. They didn't serve the same God that Daniel served. He served the almighty God. However, the king Nebuchadnezzar served, you know, statues and stuff like that. But the thing with that is, although Daniel was in this place where everybody served different gods or served the God that he didn't serve, he did not compromise. But then again, he had to maneuver like, hey, how do I go about this? Because being in a place where everybody don't see the same thing as you and they don't believe the same God that you believe, you still have to serve your God. Right. Yahweh, Jesus. Um, So you have to ask God how to maneuver, how to bring, you know, them to him, you know, or even just for you, for your sake, how to. uh, Ask God to keep you. So ask God to show you how to go on in this season. Because sometimes God will put you in a place where it's completely foreign. Where people are literally serving their own gods in idolatry. And maybe he's calling you to be the light of it. So that they will serve God for God's glory. To show them that he is the one and true living God. Just like with Daniel. You know, they worship that then they came to the point to where Nebuchadnezzar, I believe, started worshiping. Uh, I think he had the whole kingdom, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all go look it up. But I think he had the whole kingdom to worship Daniel's God. One person, I think it was actually three, because Meshach, Shadrach, Shadrach, and Abednego, too. Right? So, y'all just go look up the story. But yeah, y'all just don't compromise. Y'all, it's, I feel like this message is going everywhere. But the main thing, y'all, is. Allow God to guide you. Just to recap, allow God to guide you and lead you. And the more control you release to God, the more peace you will have. Right? And in that, it will require you to, God will probably, you know, move you to different places, whether it's physically, spiritually, whatever. But the thing is, if God has chosen you for it, you are already approved. So you don't have to feel like you have to be approved by man or work for man's approval or even work for God's approval. He chose you before you was born. He chose you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. Right? So now it's just let God be God. And again, y'all, relation over religion. Relationship over religion. Right? And let, again, allow God to guide you. Because if it's going to cause you to fall into temptation, then you don't, don't do it just like... If it's going to cause you to fall into temptation and you know it, don't do it just yet. Because maybe you're not as strong in that certain place just yet. I don't know. Either way, y'all, just go take everything back to God. Um, And just allow him to lead you and guide you. Um, And again, y'all, God sometimes will put you in a place where there is people that's worshiping in a paganistic, you know, environment. But that's where the test comes in. Are you going to bow down to their God? Are you going to continue to serve your true and only, the one and true only living God? And let the whole kingdom through, how can I say it? Let the whole kingdom glorify your God because of, oh, this is so good. 
Are you going to allow God to use you for his glory so that the whole kingdom serve him because you allow God to use you? There you go. There you go, y'all. Because I was really trying to figure, like, how we going to do this? How we going to get this out, Lord? But, yeah, family, um, we all got some some work to do when it comes to just allowing God to do our, allow, allow God into our hearts. And it's not back with his word. And sometimes our hearts don't want to hear it, but that's what our heart needs. So, yeah, y'all, I love y'all so much. And, um, yeah. Yeah, we got this. We got this. And, um, y'all, we got this. We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us, okay? Yeah, so with that being said, I'll see y'all soon. I don't know how soon, but it's got to allow me to. That's how I'll be on. That's when I'll be on. But anyway, y'all, it's been real. Bye.